Yeah, I know. It's still over a month until Halloween, but hey, it's almost October. Fall has arrived. I'm just going to start early. You can't stop me. Alright, listen up nerds, if you ever stumble through a dimensional portal and end up in a fantasy world where magic exists and the undead roam the land, this could save your hide, so you better pay attention. So what would you do if suddenly you're attacked by a skeleton? You gotta deal with it. So, um, there are a few ways. This will be a pretty good way. I'll get to that later. Now, oh, by the way, if you're wondering, this is the improved version of the Igorot headhunting axe that one of my viewers made after Eric broke the handle of the previous one, which actually turned out to be a good thing. I decided, you know what, let's turn this into a two-handed version. So this is much sturdier and pretty badass. I quite like this thing. But before I discuss the weapons, let's think about the skeletons themselves. Now, unfortunately, I can't do a demonstration because I don't personally know any supermodels. So how would an undead skeleton work? Well, magic, duh. But exactly what kind of effect would the magic produce that allows a skeleton to walk around? Now, sure, it could be some sort of overpowered, god-level, reality-altering thing where the magic just basically goes, well, here's a new rule. Skeletons can now walk around and act like really angry people. That's, that's a bit too simple for my taste. So it would be something like, say, the magic enables a spirit to take control of these bones, and maybe they, they are magically connected at the joints. Like there's some kind of <laughs> sticky magic that holds them together in, in sort of a flexible configuration to act like joints, and then maybe the spirit or whatever can control that arrangement through telekinesis. That seems somewhat reasonable-ish. Or it could also be some sort of force field, essentially, that holds all the bones together and can then be controlled as a unit. That could potentially also be done with some kind of sci-fi method. So how would you deal with that? Depending on the kind of magic, this might be really freaking difficult. Like, for example, if, if we go with the, the force field idea and it allows some kind of entity to move, basically, it could be whatever material is in this humanoid force field arrangement. That would be pretty much impossible to deal with because at that point it just holds the material in place. So if you fracture the bone, the magic would still hold the fragments together. So it wouldn't necessarily come undone. We should probably ignore that part. You know, same as with nanites holding the skeleton together, because if you're dealing with nanites, you're doomed anyway. They can do whatever they want, essentially, or whatever they're programmed to. So let's go with the idea. So let's go with the idea that the magic somehow forms a flexible connection where the joints would be anatomically, and that something controls that. So in that case, if you destroy the bones, or if you rip them apart, if you overcome the force that this magic generates to just rip the bones apart, for example, that could be one way of dealing with it. Um, you can't go with the zombie method, destroying the head, because the skeleton doesn't actually use the head to, you know, as a processing unit, if you will. There's nothing in the skull that would actually do that. So you would have to destroy the skeleton, or at least compromise it structurally, to the point where it can't effectively move around anymore. And it could still... <laughs> the rib cage could still lie on the floor, and the, the arms could still flop around and try to grab you and attack you, which would still be a nuisance, but not as bad as the entire thing coming after you. So generally, in most fantasy scenarios, it's common knowledge that blunt weapons are the way to go against skeletons. It could even be something as simple as a metal rod. Uh, this one here happens to be a machine aluminum handbow from combative.com, link down below in case you're interested. Now I'm actually going to test and review this one. If you have something like this, the best way to use it, of course, is to dazzle your opponent. And then when they're distracted, you suddenly strike. I'm just kidding. Wouldn't work against the undead. Is the video serious enough for you yet? Another simple but effective method would be using a bar maze. Now this is just a solid hunk of steel. It's made of four bars that are welded together, 
and this thing has a lot of heft. So if you struck a skeleton with this, like straight in the chest, you would probably break a lot of ribs. You might even break them out of the rib cage, or if you if you struck the shoulder, you might actually strike off the shoulder, depending again on how it's attached. If the if the magic holding the bones together has a limit for how much force it can withstand, then a proper strike to the shoulder might actually detach it and then pop it out of the socket. And, you know, smashing the leg bones, of course, would be effective to, to bring them down. All of the weapons that I'm showing here are also linked in the video description, by the way. This, of course, would be an excellent choice. A pole hammer. That way you've got a nice bit of reach. You can strike them very hard. And you've even got this claw hammer here. This could potentially kind of hold onto a bone and, and kind of pull it out. Like if you strike, grabs onto it and cracks part of the bone and just tears out a rib or something like this. So that will probably be pretty effective against a skeleton. You could maybe, if you manage to attack a skeleton from behind, get this hook behind the shoulder blade and just pop it off, basically. So there are a variety of ways in which you could use that. Plus, of course, you have the advantage of being able to hook the weapon and control it, things like that. Same here, you could do a lot of damage with a two-handed axe. Uh, this would shear through bone pretty easily. So you could just cut through the leg bones, potentially. With a one-handed sword, that would be pretty difficult. But a two-handed axe, pole arm, something like that, yeah, you could probably manage that, unless the bone is too calcified and hard. But even so, this is going to be significant impact, so you may be able to shatter the leg bones and, and things like that, and just render the skeleton immobile, essentially. Now, here's a good one if you just had to get past skeleton warriors and didn't have to absolutely destroy them right then and there. Pick up a shield and essentially run through them. How could that work? Well, if you think about it, a skeleton would be pretty light. The, the weight of a human skeleton is about 14% of the, the overall body mass. So if you have, say, an, an 80 kilogram man, he would leave behind about 12 kilograms of skeleton. That's not very heavy at all. You could easily push them over. They just don't have a lot of body mass. Depending on how the magic works and how powerful it is, the strength of a skeleton could be anything from 90-year-old arthritic grandma to the Hulk, essentially. If they are very strong, then they may be able to resist you pushing them over just by you know, holding against it like, like a wrestler would. Um, now, usually skeletons don't have that much intelligence. They tend to have more than zombies, but they are usually still limited, so they probably wouldn't fight with finesse, and they probably wouldn't use know how to use grappling techniques and whatnot. And either way, even if they are fairly strong, what they couldn't really deal with is if you just pick them up, because they are light. The only thing that prevents somebody from being picked up is their body weight, essentially. You can't really dig into the ground and then hold on with your muscles. If you're lifted off, you're lifted off. Doesn't matter. And if they're very light, you could just literally just grab them, pick them up over your head, throw them against the wall, or try to break them over your leg, uh, the Bane routine, essentially. can just beat the devil out of it. And that's also where something like this comes in handy. Imagine you just swing at the, at the skeleton as hard as you can, and the blade gets stuck in the bone at some point, but your swing continues, and because they don't weigh much, you would probably just throw them off and just hurl them across the room or dungeon or whatever it happens to be. But what if all you have is a fairly light single-handed sword, like this arming sword here? This wouldn't be very good at hacking through bone. So you'd have to figure out something else. How would you use this? Well, similar to how they dealt with armor back in the day. Half sorting pops up in the historical manuals, but grab it by the blade and strike with either the guard or pommel. So you could strike the skeleton pretty hard, try to just beat it into a pulp with this. Not ideal by any means, but definitely better than trying to hack at it, or let alone even stab a skeleton. You could potentially also bash them with the pommel like this. Not going to be as strong, so I doubt that you could do a whole lot of damage to the skeleton, unless you're exceptionally strong. 
And I mean, you could also use the blade as a lever for grappling. There are plenty of grappling techniques involving the blade and common takedowns in historical wrestling would be pretty easy because they're a lot lighter. Uh, now, again, the, their strength can vary, but generally grappling techniques are designed to break the opponent's structure, throw them off balance, and bypass their strength to a large extent. So you could try to get the skeleton on the ground and stomp it, essentially. If you were wearing a full suit of plate armor, it would be even easier because then you weigh a lot more than a skeleton and you could almost just fall on it and bury it under you and then just <laughs> pound away at it, which again might not be super effective, but you know, might be kind of a last ditch thing to do. Uh, but what if the skeleton itself is armored? Uh, you could have a bit of a problem here. Now, a skeleton wearing armor wouldn't be as effective as a person because, of course, the armor wouldn't fit at all. It would just rattle around. It might even be able to pull off parts of the armor because if they just slip off. If they do wear armor, that would increase their weight, of course, it would make them a bit more difficult to deal with. But still, it's a lot of the weight of a person is gone. If you add a bit of metal to it, it's still going to be much easier to deal with than a living opponent, especially a living armored opponent. So they would still be probably pushovers, literally. And again, blunt weapons. They deal with heavy armor as well. And arguably in this case might be even more effective because usually the armor is filled out, if you will. You know, there's a, a person with flesh and muscle and everything, soft tissue. Uh, sometimes there, there's padded uh, undergarments as well. Uh, in case of a skeleton, there's a lot of air space, so there's nothing pushing against it from the inside, so to speak. So it might actually be easier to dent the armor. If you just have an empty armor, or mostly empty armor, lying around somewhere and, and you bash it, then it's probably going to be easier to dent it. And in that way, armor might actually not help skeletons too much because they are fairly sturdy to begin with and there is no soft tissue damage or anything. So a lot of what armor does usually protect against, they don't care about anyway. So armor just happens to be there. And if anything, it might even hinder them a bit more because as I said, it kind of rattles around loosely on them. It shifts in ways that armor normally wouldn't. But at the same time, late medieval and, and Renaissance style plate armor is really well fitted together, they could still move in that. And of course, then you have the problem that it doesn't have the weaknesses that you normally have in armor. Like, generally, there are certain parts of the armor that aren't covered under the armpits, groin, etc. They have to be flexible so you can move in them. And normally you would be able to thrust a blade into those gaps of the armor to injure the wearer underneath, which is difficult enough, but at least it's an option. Well, this skeleton wouldn't care because there's just soft tissue there in these gaps, which the skeleton doesn't even have. So I think a skeleton knight in, in well-maintained and, and well-made and, and fit together plate armor, that would be quite a problem. You don't usually see that normally, you just have rags and parts of armor and whatever. So I suppose in that case, I would have to suggest trip them or otherwise take them down and then pile a bunch of rocks or logs or other heavy material on them to just keep them pinned on the ground and just be like, yep, yeah, that's dealt with, let's move on. Let's get drunk in the next tavern. We're done here. Anyway, that's enough for now. So I hope you found these weird speculations entertaining. Again, check out the links in the description down below. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.